all right welcome back to the channel warhammer man back in the studio and today we're taking a look at some new world eater rules uh, obviously with the codex coming out sometime in the relatively near future aka it's been announced already uh, we take a look at some in the meantime rules uh, make sure you like and subscribe if you do enjoy this type of video so with White Dwarf 477's preview, uh, the World Eaters kill, maim, and burn with brutal new rules. So we talked a little bit about White Dwarf 477 and some of the contents, but here we can kind of focus in on what is inside. Every month, White Dwarf brings Warhammer Hobbyists a treasure trove of brilliant stuff. From the painting tutorials, free stories, bonus rules for your favorite games, and tons of insightful articles covering all aspects of the Warhammer hobby. So here we see 477 free card extravaganza is advertised on the envelope here. And it is 21 new Warcry fighter cards. So what those are, they're the most recent four Warhammer Underworlds warbands. And then that's their fighter cards to be used in Warcry. So we see it's the Stormcast and the Cruel Boys from the last starter set. And then we see the Buccaneers and the Skeleton, uh, like Necromancer guys that recently came out. So if you wanted to play with those in Warcry, uh, those cards obviously will let you do that as they have all the stats. And then the most recent Warcry book basically explained how those rules work and everything to take that existing Warband or to mix them in with uh, other models and who can mix with who, etc. Uh, so very cool. But most importantly... We see that the rules are here for World Eaters. So it's the Battle Tome update for Flesh Eater Quartz, A Tale of Four Warlords Battle Report, Galactic Warhost World Eaters, and then Zone Mortalis rules for the Horus Heresy, the final part of our Tome Keepers story, and much more for 40k and Sigmar. Uh, but what we're focusing on is obviously the World Eaters. So they're going to have a bunch of new rules coming out in this in the meantime to kind of hold you over. This is sort of like, a, you know, a little bit of a beta action as well. I'm sure they're going to see how these rules work for balance, kind of release them. And then we'll see some of this transfer over into the actual codex uh, when we do get it. Probably towards the end of the year, maybe early next year. Uh, this month, a fog of fury descends upon the pages of White Dwarf as the World Eaters stake their claim on issue 477. Unlike the many warbands that make up the cast Space Marines, the World Eaters are an original legion led by the biggest, reddest, and meanest Primarch of all, Angron. And so we see a little spread right here. Cool piece of terrain in the background. Not sure what that is. Uh, and then we see Karn the Betrayer facing off against the Avatar, some Banshees, Lord of Skulls. Uh, very nice. That's right, Codex World Eaters is coming. The iconic chain axes of the Bloodthirsty Legion were unveiled during Warhammer Fest, but the anticipation is more than we could bear. So to help quell the rage of the Butcher's Nails, the White Dwarf team have made an offering to Korn. This issue boasts brutal swathe of rules they can use to reap a harvest of skulls in the games of Warhammer 40,000 until the full codex arrives. So very cool. That looks like a Stormgast Eternal. Maybe they uh, put the wrong picture in there. <laughs> Welcome to a bumper blood splattered index hereticus. World Eaters. Eight pages of lore. Six pages of rules. A short story starring Karn the Betrayer. All of this plus a massive selection of blood drenched World Eaters conversions. Epic paint jobs. And a guide on how to create the classic brass and crimson color scheme yourself. You might recognize some of these rules from Warzone Chardon Act 2, The Book of Fire, but they are all collected here in one definitive source and adapted to work with the upcoming release of Codex Chaos Space Marines. On top of their iconic Legion trait, the Butcher's Nails, you'll find six Furious Warlord traits, six Gory Relics, eight Slaughterous Stratagems, and new data sheets for the Unstoppable Karn the Betrayer and the iconic Corn Berserkers. So very cool. So Chaos Codex Space Marines is coming up soon. So this 
update that we're getting in White Dwarf will go right along with that Codex Chaos Space Reigns so that you can essentially play World Eaters. And then eventually they'll get their own Codex. Very cool. So six, so we know obviously they have a Legion trait, the Butcher's Nails. And then they have six Warlord traits you can choose. Six Relics. Eight Stratagems. And then new data sheets for Karn the Betrayer, uh, who's obviously an, an elite, or a uh, HQ choice rather, um, and a uh, character. And then Corn Berserkers as well. So very cool. So I wonder, I mean, I assume that means that Corn Berserkers will not be in the new Chaos Codex. So that will be kind of interesting as they've sort of like phased out Thousand Sons and Death Guard. Uh, so will they do the same for Corn, At least for the Berserkers or the uh, World Eaters anyway. I uh, can't make out what any of this says. It's all too small, unfortunately. Would be cool to know. Of course, White Dwarf 477 comes packed with a wealth of other features. The World Eaters don't get to steal the stage for bloodshed. As the noble Flesh Eater Courts enjoy a Tome Celestial with a new War Scroll for their Charnel Throne, plus new rules for match play, open play, and narrative play. Plus the epic tale of Four Warlords reaches its grand finale. Backpowders Buccaneers come to Warcry. Warhammer the Horse Heresy leaps into Zone Mortalis with new rules and a whole bunch more. There are even stickers for Chaos Gate, Demon Hunters, and cards for many of the above rules. So yeah, I saw that there was specifically... Yeah, it looks like here we have cards for all of the corn stuff. So that looks like Karn the Betrayer, Data Sheet, probably one for the uh, Berserkers, corn Berserkers as well. And then we see one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, can't quite make out how many here, but, um, you know, a bunch of those cards. So probably going to be either the Warlord traits, the Relics, or both. Doesn't look like quite enough, but, you know, obviously some of the pictures cut off. So hopefully it's all in there. That would be very cool. And then obviously you don't have to worry about Psychic Powers because they ain't got none. So very cool. Definitely looking forward to this one for all you corn fans out there. Uh, for all the uh, Blood for the Blood God, Skulls for the Throne of Throne people. Uh, this is definitely going to be a cool bump. And then obviously, you know, if this is coming out in the meantime, we would assume that the Chaos Codex is not far off. Haven't seen uh, much out of that rules-wise so far. Only a couple things they've shown off. Um, and then obviously, you know, the cover and everything. But it looks like it's probably closer um, than uh, than we thought. I mean, it may be only a couple weeks old. Because this White Dwarf coming right out. And then basically you'll have rules that you won't be able to use. Because the new Codex isn't out yet. Um, I imagine that Codex is probably going to come in next week's pre-orders. Or maybe two weeks from now. So definitely looking out for that. Uh, so for all the Chaos fans out there. Uh, your patience will finally pay off. And the Dark Gods will reward you. With the new Tome of Knowledge. So that you can play your heretics on the battlefield of Warhammer 40,000. And it won't be long now. So very, very cool. Uh, but uh, with that, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. So this is obviously a, you know, White Dwarf meant specifically for Flesh Eater Quartz. Sigmar, probably going to be a necessity. Or else, you know, obviously Chaos. Corn fans out there for the World Eaters. And then of course... If you're into Warcry, uh, you know, definitely an opportunity to play some of your Underworlds Warbands into Warcry. Uh, and I really do like when they specifically have all these cool cards and everything in White Dwarf. Because I'm one of the people who actually likes having all the data cards and everything. I like to have, like, all the stratagems, all the different little, like, quick reference stuff. Makes the games fun. It's nice to have those accessories and makes it more enjoyable not like digging through your book for every little rule or trying to like flip through a bunch of different things so I'm a big fan of the cards and when they put those in White Dwarf it really for me is the best way to offer them because it is cool to offer them free where you can download them and print them off or whatever but you know I'm not trying to go through all the extra effort so for a few bucks you pick up the White Dwarf it has some cool articles you know it's a magazine specifically about a hobby that we all enjoy and then it gives you a bunch of cool tools for your games so those are the most appealing uh, issues for me. 
Now, I'm not necessarily going to be playing any of those warbands specifically, uh, nor do I plan on playing a corn army. So, not 100% sure if I'm necessarily going to snag this up. Uh, maybe get it just because uh, it's a nice little bit of reading material and entertaining and there's some cool stuff in there. Uh, but could go either way for me. But if you are a corn player, if you are a flesh eater court player, or if you do enjoy using any of those uh, Underworlds Wargrounds in Warcry, uh, definitely probably going to be an auto pick up for you uh, but that's it gonna go ahead and wrap it up there just a cool little thing definitely looking forward to seeing you know corn resurgence uh, really just chaos resurgence in general and to tell you the truth the armor of contempt rule has really changed the game even the playing field quite a bit uh, so I do expect with a new codex and armor of contempt that chaos are going to legitimately be a force to be reckoned with I expect them to be very good obviously we saw the possessed We've seen a couple of the other, uh, you know, rules, data sheets, etc. so far, and uh, they appear to be very good. So definitely looking forward to Chaos. Uh, they are going to be very strong, I suspect. And, uh, you know, obviously Thousand Suns are very good right now with their strong psychic presence, Armor of Contempt, and, you know, their overall just durability. Death Guard are, you know, very, very durable. Uh, you know, pretty strong overall and performing quite well. And then obviously Sisters of Battle have done well with Armor of Contempt. We've seen various Space Marine Legions. Uh, you know, honestly, I think probably, you know, Grey Knights is kind of like the good equivalence of Thousand Suns. is sort of like the evil. So Grey Knights, slightly worse than Thousand Suns, but Thousand Suns have really benefited. So I'm curious to see how the whole fight twice and all the different aspects of, you know, World Eaters and Corn are going to really reflect in here. I suspect they'll get a stratagem similar to like the Sisters of Battle one where they can basically fail, um, I'm sorry, uh, cancel a psychic power on like a four up if they're within 24 inches of it or something like that. It was like the Collar of Corn or something like that before. And uh, that is a very, very strong ability. Uh, you know, the Sisters of Battle have it where if they fail to stop a psychic power with their D6 roll on a six, it's like stopped. If they fail that, they can then pay a command point, roll a d6, and on a 4-up, uh, the psychic power is denied. So, Korn's going to have something similar to that. Now, is just that one stratagem or ability or whatever going to make up for them not having any psychic powers? You know, that's up to you. I think that a lot of times when you have an army that doesn't have psychic, the same way like Tau doesn't have psychic or combat, they're going to be really good in the phase that they do participate in. So Tau is very good at shooting because they don't have psychic. They don't really have combat. So Corn has specifically combat with no psychic and little shooting. So I do suspect they will be very, very good at combat. And as we're seeing now, they have taken out a lot of the fight twice stuff. Previously, there was a lot of, you know, fight twice abilities. Now there's a lot less of them. There's still fight on deaths. But some of the new fight on deaths, like the Tyranid ones, are only if you haven't fought already. So they are really getting rid of like a lot of the fight twice stuff. So that being said, if Korn retains its ability to fight twice, uh, it's going to be very, very good. So, you know, essentially, if you're not familiar with it already, you can basically charge into combat, you fight, and then after everybody else has fought, you get to actually just fight a second time. But it's treated like you just charged in. So you basically get another consolidate, you know, pile in. Uh, or I'm sorry, you get to charge, you get to pile in, you get to fight, you get to consolidate, then you get to pile in, then you get to fight, then you get to consolidate again. Um, very, very strong. So could be really cool. Definitely looking forward to it. Uh, but going to wrap it up there. Let me know what you think down below. Are you excited for the World Eaters? Are you looking forward to, uh, you know, spilling some blood for the Blood God? Or are uh, you just waiting for the Chaos Space Marine Heretic Codex? Uh, definitely uh, curious to hear from you guys. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're into reactions, reviews, news. For Warhammer 40,000, Kill Team Necromunda, Age of Sigmar, Warcry, and of course some Horus Heresy. Everything from reactions, reviews, news, painting, modeling, conversion tutorials. Check out the uh, video links down below. That's it for today. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and I'm out of here.